All right, we are live. Welcome to the live stream. We are talking about beautiful kitchens, great kitchens, fantastic kitchens, gorgeous kitchens. We're going to look at a whole bunch of them tonight. And I thought we'd continue this theme this week as well. If you caught last week's live stream, we did something very similar where we're checking out beautiful kitchens and kind of examining what we like about them in uh, what maybe, well, mostly what we like about them, not really what we don't like about them because that can be there too. But I want to stay on the positive note and look at some of these beautiful kitchens and see some of the things that we can take away from these kitchens to either, you know, just admire or give us ideas for our next kitchen renovation. If we're designers, if we're just homeowners, if we're just lovers of great design, these are very beautiful kitchens to look at to see how these designers and uh, architects or homeowners pulled all these pieces together to come up with these very beautiful uh, layouts for their kitchens and functional spaces. So we're going to look at some of these tonight. I hope you're all having a wonderful evening or wonderful day, whatever time of day it is. Or if you're watching this in the replay, thanks so much for being here. I do want to encourage you if you're watching in the live to say hi in the chat and be involved in the chat as it is a very chatty group that we get here on Wednesday night and which I'm very thankful for. And if you're watching this in replay, comment down below any time of just uh, things that you see that you like. Let us know where you're watching from and great to hear from you. So let's just jump into this tonight. And uh, at the end, maybe we'll run through some of the, you know, things that I go through to first create a functional kitchen. But we don't, I want to jump right into these beautiful images and um, share them with you. You know, these are just images I found on Google and I was kind of searching Google images to find, you know, just different things that catch, catch my eye and try to pick out. Uh, aspects of some of these designs that I like. Now, not all of these kitchens are, are similar. Not all of them are even whole kitchens that I would say that I, I love everything about. But there's aspects of certain ones that I, I really do like and I want to point out, or even just certain details that I think are interesting. So that's what we're going to do tonight and look through this. But I also want you to let us know in the comment or let us know in, in the comment down below what you like or maybe dislike about these particular kitchens. Um, but specifically, what are the aspects that you really like? Because I find that if we concentrate on the things that really, you know, that we can really take away from these designs, even if they're kitchens we don't love, uh, it helps us in the future to become even better at, um, you know, designing our own spaces. I find it for me, especially because I do this so much that I can get lost in my own, um, you know, ways of thinking. So this helps me to broaden my horizons uh, in the in the design space. So I do definitely want to say hi to everyone. I see you jumping in from all over the place and, and I so appreciate you being here. Um, that is very awesome. And uh, so let's let's look at this. You've had a few seconds to look at this kitchen. There's a few aspects of this kitchen that I really like. One in particular that I just think is maybe the focal point of this kitchen, which is pretty blatant. But there's a few aspects that I really do want to look at. And one is um, the library pulls on the top drawers and then the regular handles on the rest of the drawer and doors. Very small detail, um, something that, you know, you could do without, but it's these fine details that I think really make a difference in a kitchen design or in, you know, the aesthetic of a kitchen that uh, make it stand out from other things. It, it's those small little things, those small little details that I appreciate. I also like the fact that this has an appropriate amount of knee space, leg room for an overhang. People always ask me, Mark, what is the appropriate overhang for a lunch counter? And I always say, measure your lap and make sure that you fit under there. That's going to be the most comfortable because generally speaking, island seating isn't normally that comfortable unless you really are intentional about it. And uh, as Helen's pointing out here, she says she's loving the two-tone. I think two-tone, in this case, three-tone, is something that's not going away. And I get that question quite a bit as well. Is two-tone a thing of the past? Is it something that's still trendy? I definitely think two-tone kitchens or three-tone kitchens, as we'll see in a few other of these kitchen pictures, very, very popular still. Now, I don't know if this, you know, this couldn't be from 2024. This might be from 2018. I don't really know when these pictures were all taken, but I do see the trend of two-tone still being something that's very popular and uh, keeps the kitchen uh, interesting visually, especially, uh, especially when it's done, you know, the right way. And um, so that's very cool. Uh, the other thing, yeah, I love about these are those, those, those beautiful stools. Uh, normally kitchen seating is not very comfortable. 
and uh, you want to sit there for the least amount of time possible. So why are you spending all this money to make it sittable when you don't even want to sit there? So having something that's comfortable is definitely uh, the way to do it. But what, what it really stands out to me and hopefully to you too is um, is this and I'm sorry, it's a little blurry as you, as you zoom in, but this refrigerator, um, you know, piece in, in the center of this wall. Now, this is absolutely gorgeous. It's a paneled refrigerator. Um, you know, it sets this kitchen apart, in my opinion. Normally, I would not want to have a tall item in the middle of you know, a run of countertops. So basically, if you're designing a kitchen, you want to avoid interrupting counter space, uh, the flow of counter space with a tall item. However, in this design scenario, it totally works and totally makes sense. So this is where the guidelines can be, you know, you can push the envelope, smudge the lines a little bit or color outside the lines even to create something that's that really works for the specific space. Always think about your kitchen design, your home. There's nuances to it that are different from everyone else's. All the advice that you hear from me or anyone else or everybody in the chat, it's all great advice. However, it does come down to your specifics of your kitchen. And in this kitchen, this really works. If you've offset that to the right or the left, it wouldn't give the same effect. And I think that's what really makes this kitchen stand out is that beautiful uh, refrigerator. And it works because of that two tone. If it, if it was the white or maybe even the blue, it wouldn't work so well. Just really sets it apart. It's nice and symmetrical. And I just think, wow, that's just a beautiful, beautiful kitchen. Big high ceilings. You got the tall stacked cabinets with the glass and all that stuff is, is really great. But uh, overall, that's what really makes this kitchen stand out to me. I noticed you all mentioned in the chat how, how nice and warm it is wherever you all are. <laughs> just, it's like mine is nine today here Celsius. So stop putting how warm it is, would you? <laughs> I'm getting jealous. Yeah. Jackie picks out she doesn't like the rug. Well, you can only see a corner of it. So maybe it's beautiful. We just don't know. Let's go on to the next one. So that was that's really beautiful. Again, like this, you can look at these and study them. And that's what I like to do is just go through these and you know, find the things that I really enjoy about some of these spaces. Again, to help me uh, in my design journey and when I'm trying to design for clients or think about things when I'm doing consults with clients, um, different ideas that we can you know put into their layouts. So very beautiful. All right, let's move on to the next one. You'll see it's. Uh, uh, around this kind of same theme of a of a kitchen in a way it's two-toned again i just i love the color of this one um you know shaker door is is pretty standard we had a conversation earlier today just about you know is the shaker door still something that is um it, it is popular and um you know it, it is it is very popular but I don't know if it's the door that's going to carry us into the next decade for sure, but um, you know, it's it's still something that's very popular. But we're going to talk more about door styles later because there's one in here I really love, and I'd also I'd like to get your opinion. What do you think is the we've seen the next door style? Is there another door style that, that is going to become very popular? But uh, this kitchen's beautiful overall. I mean, what I love about this kitchen, however, is um, just this massive big island. And now this island has seating to the uh, left or right, depending on the side you're standing on. You can kind of see the, the the chair there and the transition to a different surface um, there by my face. Uh, however, like right, right there, where's that? Right there. There we go. Okay. <laughs> um, that I love the fact that this island is generally left untouched as storage it's a deep double deep island and i love an island that's just you know clean surface there's no appliance there's no um it's sink it's just one big massive uh you know prep space usable area and so i really like that um i do i do love the colors overall i love that range is beautiful this one again this has a um a, a uh, pot filler which uh, we start to see we're seeing a lot of and it's still something that i get asked quite a bit about in my opinion you know put it in or don't put it in if you want one if you don't want one you know whatever whatever floats your boat on the pot filler i haven't formed a, a real substantial opinion on the pot filler as of yet in the same regards as i have with corner cabinets or otr microwaves or other things so i'm still trying to find my way 
with the uh, with the pot filler if you know what i'm saying but the uh, beautiful window nice symmetrical paneled fridge we're seeing a lot of that and i think that's going to be something we see more and more and especially maybe a little higher end market uh, well, this is obviously a higher end market of, of a kitchen with that range and just you know this space beautiful window what I like uh, also about this particular kitchen is the backsplash for the range is just that one piece slab that matches the countertop. I think that's a really smart way to do it. And I think looking at this from a different angle, we'd see that that range wall is really a beautiful showpiece for this kitchen as well. So I really like this kitchen, um, you know, lots you can pull away from it. And uh, again, when you're looking at these spaces, there's parts you don't like, there's parts you do like. And that's what helps you kind of form your opinions and decisions for your own uh, kitchen design. This one also has um, corner drawers, which, you know, I'm not sure if I like or not. I, I, you know, I'm not a super fan of any corner cabinet, to be honest with you, if, if you're, you know, in into my channel at all or understand my thought about that. Um, but, you know, what do you think? Is, is this a good idea or not? And uh, I think in this kitchen as well, the, the handles are appropriately sized for the, the doors. Again, I'm not a super fan of oversized handles. I, I don't know, just a thing. But I think it looks I think it looks good here and it, it all kind of fits and flows. So another beautiful space and uh, everyone, people are weighing in on the pot filler. So that's great. Um, and uh, I love the fact I love that we get uh, a lot of different opinions about the different things. You'll notice, too, there's some yellow and green that makes a kitchen photo. That's what you have to have. In this case, it's bananas, <laughs> which we don't see a lot of. Normally, it's it's uh, lemons. So, though there, I think there is a lemon there in the back uh, on that bowl. So, could be a could be a pear or something else. All right, let's go to this next one. So again, we'll look at that big island. Uh, love it. Love a big island. If you can fit one in, do it. Tony had a, a mention there. Uh, here, here's a good comment uh, from Tony. Uh, the cabinet should extend to the ceiling. Um, I don't know. Yeah. And, and that's, that's again, an interesting take. It was a design decision. That's a, that's a, I'm guessing a 10 foot ceiling. Um, so, you know, there's some, there's some, you know, d decisions that would have to be made about doing that and making it look the way you want it to look. So, you know, uh, some people would prefer it to the ceiling. Some people prefer it the way it is like that. That's still finishing probably around eight feet. So they're, they're pretty high as it is, but yeah, pretty cool. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, a little more of an urban vibe here with this kitchen. And um, uh, not my favorite kitchen overall, but there are some aspects that I like about it. So uh, let's let's dive into those. Um, what do you think about the brick look? I know it's probably that old, you know, apartment-y downtown vibe. Um, is 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 brick still cool? <laughs> I don't I don't know. Um, but let's look at what is interesting you can take away from this kitchen. Um, and it's sort of the big green arrow, but it's it's this recessed uh, unit that's into that wall. I I like how they did that. I like how they recessed that, framed it in with the wall, um, and that was definitely something that was built out around those cabinets. It it creates a space where there's no there's no corner cabinet, um, but instead of just building like a pillar in the corner, they just carried it right around everything. And so I thought that was an interesting feature, which I really liked about this space. I love the seamless handleless, uh, you know, integrated handle design. But that's something that stood out to me about this. And um, normally, you know, those cabinets would be sitting on the wall, and they'd look like they're you know on the wall. But this looks like they're obviously built into that space, which is really really cool. Um, a really not interesting feature. So, you know, thinking about your your design, your kitchens, is this something that you can do to insert something into a pre-existing space? A lot of us have closets um, that we want to convert. A lot of us have, um, you know, spaces like that that we can inset cabinets into. And oftentimes it can be a really great use of the space uh, to do that. And, and it looks you know, has a particular sleek look. So if you like this ultra modern look as well, this really plays into that really, really nicely. The other thing that I thought was interesting about this kitchen, which I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of this. I'm not a huge fan of a raised lunch counter um, in, in general, but I like this idea of having um, the, the, the wood timber on top of the stone that overhangs. And um, I'm, 
I'm guessing that there is leg room beyond that, beyond the countertop as well. So there, there's probably appropriate uh, uh, leg room in this uh, scenario. And, um, you know, it just gives you a unique feature. A little more of a rustic feature in this more contemporary, modern, urban setting, uh, which is uh, which is a, a cool vibe, I guess. Um, so, yeah. But, you know, generally I like my surfaces to be uninterrupted without some kind of drop off or a lip. Um, but, you know, I think it works in this particular um, scenario. And it also, it, it probably makes sitting there a little more comfortable because, you know, like I, I mentioned, island seating is never very, very comfortable. So, so I, I'm assuming there's leg room uh, beyond that. But uh, yeah, interesting, cool feature. And uh, I thought that was kind of cool. All right, let's go to this next one. And listen, give it a thumbs up. Give the, give this live stream a thumbs up or this video a thumbs up if you're watching and replay. I absolutely appreciate it. And um, it would be very nice. Help my ego. <laughs> this one's the obvious one. We had one like this last week, but this one's even more more pretty. And um, actually, a few things about this kitchen that I, I do love, but it's just the 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 um, the ambient lighting. I think is really cool. I love that feature. I love the great big window, um, but the lighting under the toe kick. So if you're thinking about the toe kick lighting idea, and if it, you think it's something that um, you know it, it's going to be. Did you, would you want to try it in your kitchen? What's it look like? This kind of gives you that idea. This is in daylight with other lights on. It still gives you kind of that effect, uh, almost like the cabinets are floating in in, in a way. Um, so that's, that's I think, just a, a really beautiful feature. And so if you're on the fence about whether or not you like this look or not, this really definitely helps you kind of figure that out. And uh, I think it looks pretty cool. They made some conscious effort not to take these cabinets to the ceiling. And again, these are all just design decisions and uh, usually it's a more modern look when you don't bring it to the ceiling um so obviously they're going for that ultra modern look they have nice seating in this peninsula slash island it's not an island it's definitely a peninsula it wraps around they got the post there so um really really uh really interesting beautiful space so a lot you can take away there of course the fridge is in that wall section uh to the to the left and uh, again, we're seeing a lot of panel fridges, refrigerators um, come up um, more and more and more. And I think we're going to see them more and more and more as well. So Michael from Kitchen Insider, if you're watching, um, you'll be happy to hear that. I, I doubt this has a stainless steel dishwasher. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's go to the next one. <laughs> it depends on it. Jackie, you know what it's all about. Got to get the love. Um, hey, love your show. Thank you. What are some resources for designing a tiny kitchen, 106 by 83, ceiling 106? So it's a small space um, with two windows. Well, I mean... One resource um, is just my consultation, which you can check in the description below, which we just look at the space. Um, but you can also go online and find, like you could you could go into Ikea. It doesn't matter if you're using Ikea or not, but you could go in there and use their free planner tool and draw out the walls and, the, and that ceiling height and kind of plunk cabinets down to give you an idea of maybe how things could be laid out. So that's one way to do it, um, you know, for free and, and just to get ideas. And uh, there's other tools out there, um, particular cabinet companies like um, the RTA store. Uh, the RTA cabinet store.com has a free tool that you can use. Of course, they're, they're using their cabinets, but at least it gives you something that you can work with to, to draw it up. Of course, you know, you, you can go to anywhere that they sell cabinets and they'll have that service for you. I provide that service as well. Um, th so those are some of the ways you can do it. But uh, 106, so that's... Yeah, it's like not even nine by seven. So it's a little, it's a, it's a tinier space, but, but tinier spaces, smaller kitchens are sometimes um, good to design because you just, you don't have the restriction of just, you know, endless amounts of, of options. So you can check out some of those things. I hope that, that they will all be fairly helpful. Um, and Camille, 
Yay, I'm happy. So happy to catch live. Cool. I'm an architect, also not an interior designer. I struggle with kitchens. <laughs> I struggle with them too. <laughs> Still, uh, I appreciate your channel so much. Thank you so much. I love it when uh, other people in the similar type of industries, though, I mean, architecture is definitely way above my pay grade, but um, I appreciate when the people are, are, are coming on from those those areas. So thank you so much for, for being here and uh, appreciate you. All right, this kitchen here, um, I okay. So again, you're looking at the two tone. This is really three tone. You could say it's even four tone um, when when you're looking at this space. When you look at the backsplash uh, slab wall, um, so th there's a, a key element in here that I love. Um, any anything anything under 100k, uh, probably. But don't let the the price, you know. Uh, be something that that's you know too too much to overcome. The the idea is to get the ideas from these kitchens that we can bring into lower budget kitchens. So uh, although a lot of these are higher end kitchens, because when you Google any kind of kitchen on Instagram or on YouTube rather, uh, or or Google them, that you this is usually what you're getting. So um, anyway, it's this is great for inspiration, and don't let the the price of these or the potential price of these hold you back from some of these ideas. Uh, but I do think there's probably a few in here that are, are lower. And uh, let me just get my camera back on. So, okay, here's what I like about this. This is a lot happening in this kitchen. One, I love the backsplash, slide backsplashes. I don't think are going away. I think they're going to carry us through for a little while. Um, and it's got that matched, you know, look, which is fine. Uh, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. In fact, I think in this kitchen, you could have gone away with something that has more veins that just flow uh, in, a, in a particular direction. You know, but what do I know? Um, I certainly don't have the money to purchase this in the first place. So again, um, you can get too matchy matchy at times, and I, I think that could be an, an issue. But what I love, 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 love about this is just that ceiling detail. No, there's no reason to do that uh, functional wise. Um, you know, now maybe there's something upstairs where there's ventilation, or there's an HVAC run, or there's piping, or something. Who knows? A sunken bedroom i don't know there could be something that that needs to be there but my thought is it probably doesn't need to be there and it's purely for you know the aesthetic look and it's just uh just a feature and i love that about this space um you know that's that's extra money in your budget probably not very many people are actually going to do that but you could do that and it's not that expensive when you really think about it you could do that pretty inexpensively and it look really cool. So I, I thought this was really awesome. Um, and uh, and um, so I, I wanted to show that. Here, I'll throw my, my website up. You can check that out um, there. So that, I love the doors, how they're different style door on those wall cabinets. They've got that kind of reeded look to them. I'm looking for the next door style. I, I hope you can help me uh, find it. I'm looking for the next door style that's going to, um, you know, take us into the future. It's got to be out here somewhere. I don't know if we've discovered it yet. It'll probably come from Europe. I can probably go ask Michael from Kitchen Insider and he'll just say, this is what it is. And I'll be like, okay, I'm going to go with what you say um, because I think he, he'll, he'll probably know. However, I don't think it's these particular doors, but I do like the fact that they mix them up. And it's just a little bit of bravery on the designer side, on the homeowner side to say, okay, let's do that. Let's go with a different door style. Is there a reason to do it? None that I can think of other than just the pure look visually that it is, um, you know, um, the look that you're going for in, in a different look. So, excuse me. Um, and what else do I love about this kitchen? Well, I just like the 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 the, the decision with the island to make it purely like more of a table, uh, you know, one level. I think that's great. And it actually is an L shape. If you can't, it's hard to see in this picture, but uh, it's definitely an L shape island. But that ceiling detail... Think about that. If you have a high ceiling, you could easily do this, and um, you know, just look at look how it matches the wall cabinets. I just think it's a brilliant, brilliant design. So, very cool. Um, I like it. I like it a lot. Tony's saying the um, drop ceilings are great. They provide visual separation in a space. Yeah, an opportunity to install vents or fresh air. Yeah, the, you, the, there's a lots of utility behind these as well so very very true um i love it matthew what's going on any opinion on extended styles for cabinets is it worth the upcharge 
over a simple filler to eliminate a seam. Extended styles. Um, I don't not. I'm unsure what you mean by the extended style, Matthew. Uh, is it worth the upcharge? Oh, do you just mean? Uh, okay, so is it is it just an extended like style on the on the end of the cabinet? Is that what you mean? Um, I don't think it's worth a substantial upcharge to do that for the seam. No, I don't because. Uh, well, if it's a, no, it wouldn't be a frameless cabinet. So it's a framed cabinet. There'd be a seam there. I mean, it's a cool idea. I like the, I like the idea of that. I'm assuming it's like a base cabinet or wall cabinet that, um, you know, what Matthew's talking about, what I think he's talking about is a base cabinet that's framed, but one of the, one of the frames, which is going against a wall is extended so that you, you can trim it, um, cope it into the wall so that the, cause the wall is probably not square. Um, and then you don't have a separate filler that has a seam in it. I think that's what he's saying. I think, I think that's a, um, a micro detail. That's really nice. Maybe not absolutely necessary, but yeah, definitely gets the job done. Gets rid of the seam. If that's what you're going for, whether it's worth it or not, it's hard to know. Um, yeah, built-in filler. Yeah. It's hard to know. Um, I, I, yeah, I think it's here nor there maybe so. All right, let's go to the next one. I mean, what's a filler worth depending? And, and I, I'm, I'm imagine the, the, the upcharge for that's quite, probably quite a bit. For, for, for the sake of a seam, I don't think it's worth it. All right, there, that's my final answer. All right, this kitchen here. I picked this kitchen for one basic reason. It's a white kitchen. And you know, I, I just have a thing. I got a thing for white kitchens. Um, it doesn't have a paneled anything. Panel, it's dishwasher's in plain sight. The fridge is in plain sight. You know, I'm 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 a Canadian. I gotta see my dishwasher and I gotta see my fridge. That's just the way it is. I don't want to lose it in the mix of everything. <laughs> so I know, I know it's not that trendy, but I just put this one in here because it's personally something that I just like a white kitchen. You know, they don't go to the ceiling, they probably could very easily. I like the slab backsplash. I think that's just beautiful. It's got that recessed shaker style type of door, which is just my beautiful type of door. And it's got a beautiful door going into, could be a pantry, could be another room, which I think is lovely. So this, this is my kitchen, you know, not my personal kitchen in my home, but this, this is my vibe, you know? And, and when people say, well, it looks like a hospital and sterile, no, this doesn't, this looks gorgeous. So you know, I get the ones that look sterile. I understand some of them, but this was, this is done. This is done beautifully. Look at the floor. I just love it. So I won't harp on this one, but if you love white kitchens uh, and you just love, you know, that whole vibe, this one's for you. <laughs> this one's for me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Is that a walk-in pantry? Kira's asking. I, um, it, I think it could be. There's no other pantry there that we can see. And so that that's pretty cool. I love the door detail. It's a beautiful door. Um, so. <laughs> and we don't have hardwood floors in Canadian hospitals. No, we don't. That's another good detail to, to, to be on. Um, oh, Tony had a, sorry, Tony, what, where did the question go? There we go. Mark, white kitchens are so 2021. <laughs> that was a good year. That was a good year. They weren't just 2021. They were 2001. They were 2006, they were 2014, they were 2019, and they are 2024. I guarantee you the White Kitchen is not going anywhere. Not if I have anything to do about it. Anyway, all right. Very cool. All right, let's go to the next one. Yeah, I've seen this one before. You may have seen it if, if, if you've been on the channel before. Uh, we talked about, uh, we looked at this kitchen, but, um, you know, Totally different vibe um, of, of a space. It looks um, more cultural. I don't know what culture, but you know what I mean? Um, it's not a white, basic white kitchen that looks like a hospital, but I do like it. I like uh, how they just took that, that that window and the wine rack and just, you know, did, did that, you know, kind of throw off to, to that wine rack, which is cool. Interesting color. It's a beautiful green. You know, there's so many beautiful colors. What I like about this particular kitchen, um, 
is the uh, the inset doors, which is something we see a lot of. I love that over the fridge, they left it as an open kind of more curated shelf idea. Uh, my video coming out Saturday is talking about that that very thing. And uh, just, just a different space. And, uh, you know, look at the flooring. Um, there's a lot happening here. And this is where you get the, the brilliant minds of some interior designers that can really, um, you know, you know, bring some of these things together. It's very, very cool. Also, um, if you can pick out the the strap hinges on the bottom of the wine rack there, um, you know, beautiful, beautiful style there. Uh, I love it. So, so yeah, hopefully this, you know, can give you some inspiration to have a little bit of overhang on the island, uh, separate sink in the, in the island as well. I'm not a huge fan of sinks in a wood uh, top. I don't think it's the best uh, spot for a sink. Um, I showed you guys a video before that I found on YouTube, just when they removed the wooden top and just the, the, the grossness of what happened underneath that. So, you know, take, take that, you know, with a grain of salt, but, um, very, uh, very interesting design choice. And interesting that they didn't panel the dishwasher in this one, which, you know, this kitchen looks like it would deserve more paneling, the fridge and the dishwasher, uh, but they didn't. That's a big, it looks like a sub-zero fridge or something like that. Beautiful, tall fridge. I think it's 84 inches, probably seven feet um, or higher. So nice, big counter depth fridge. You can't pick out this detail very easily because of uh, what we're looking at, but the, the panel on the fridge should be deeper to so that little nub of countertop doesn't come out. I, that's the only thing I change. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> let's go on. Oh, Bluebell's asking, is the range pea green? I don't think so. Um, I think it's a reflection. Becky watching from northeast corner of California. Cool. I'm in the northeast corner of Canada. <laughs> Much colder. 550 population. Wow, awesome. Remodeling 1946 originally originally owner built kitchen. I have a smaller budget. Love this channel. Thanks so much for being here on the live stream. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully this content and others out there like it can help you, you know, get get an awesome kitchen design. So very awesome. All right, let's go to this next one. All right, okay, there's a specific thing that I like about this kitchen. Again, it's a white one. That's not why I chose it. Um, so you can you can settle down. I know there's a, it's got the black, so another two tone. I like that walnutty trim on the range. That's a range hood. That's a a trendy thing. I think it's it's more of a trendy thing than anything. Um, but it's a nice look for sure. Paneled fridge, okay, in this one as well. Um, you know, sink in the island, all good. Looks like there could be more. Sp base uh between the range and the island in this one i'm not sure if that whole island could have been moved back or you know maybe just the angle that we're looking at but uh, yeah i got the black cabinets which is nice i think a matte black finish on cabinets is definitely something we should be paying attention to for sure but what i really like about this kitchen is this detail here the way they designed this so normally when you have a full depth unit of sometime pantry fridge and you have this corner of the short wall you have this space uh, that's that's awkward to to get at, and so just by building that out, putting the the uh, appliance garage, um, making it look like more of a wall, uh, built-in wall feature, I think is a really smart way to do it. Instead of having a, a, something that's deeper that you have to reach into. Now this cabinet, when it's open, of course, anything you know up above, it's going to be challenging to get at. So unless you put something in there that you can pull out or down. Um, you know, of course, it's not the most usable usable space, but it makes this kitchen look uh, intentional. I think it, it, it it's easier to access anyway because you can at least grab the stuff that's on the front of that cabinet, which is really smart. And uh, you've got the appliance garage there, which is, which is a great idea. So just uh, if you have a, a space like this where you have a, a long L shape and, and then a short wall, you know, this is an idea that you can incorporate into your kitchens. I, I've used this a lot in the past with different uh, kitchen designs and clients. And it's just uh, when I see it like this, it's it's uh, really cool. Now, they they built out it's it's uh, my arrow sort of in the way there. And I don't know if this picture. Well, you can kind of see how that center unit is built out. And I'm not exactly sure why I don't think. 
that's the fridge. Um, it looked like the fridge was to the right. So unless that's the fridge, that would make more sense. So I'm going to guess that it's the fridge, um, which then would answer my own question. But regardless, very cool. Um, something you can you can think about there uh, when you're doing that. Also, you'll notice this one. This is a small detail, but the top drawers are slab, and the the what the deeper drawers are shaker. So that's a common thing to do as well, especially with a shaker door or any type of door that's profiled because it's it's the slimness of that front would make it look you know i don't know what the right word is silly i guess it just doesn't look right uh and so by doing the slab front is something you can do to mix up it, that's been done for years this isn't a new concept but something to pick up on um if, if you're thinking about um you know shaker type type of uh, cabinet or any type of raised panel door for that matter uh, Tony saying hiding the hood in to look like cabinet is is ideal. Yeah, uh, the number kitchen island lights is correct. <laughs> Why are odd numbers more appealing in design? Something the way we look at uh, the negative space. You know, I don't know uh, who came up with that or why, but yeah, we um, we like to have a center point. So interesting um, how it applies to certain things, but not the stools. There's four of them and three uh, lights. So very cool. But yeah, good pickup, and I like the way they did that as well um, with with the uh, the hood. Very cool. If you do have a question, I miss it. We'll, we'll get the end. Uh, hopefully, we can actually um, you know look at uh, look at those if I miss it. So uh, Tony's putting the question marks there, so that helps me kind of see it when I just scan the scan the uh, remarks. So if you do have a question that you want me to get to or a comment, uh, put a few question marks helps me just to see it better. Um, but if I miss a question at the end, we'll hopefully have time to uh, to look at those um as as well so all right um and i just sorry uh, do you personally do the designs on your website yes i do 100 percent of the designs i don't have anyone who works for me it's just me so and um for now for, for now <laughs> we'll see see how busy it gets I can only do so much so i'm trying to create content and do the same to do the, the designs but right now it's 100 percent me um all right that's how I want my drawers but not sure how to order them oh yeah well that could be challenging if you are ordering them through um you know if you get if you can deal with a person and they can do that order but if you're doing it yourself online or so through some website that could be challenging yeah you'd have to make sure you get a hold of them and ask them for slab fronts for particular cabinet or for particular sizes so Great question. Uh, what would be the perfect size for the island that fits four seats? Well, generally speaking, um, <laughs> Helen's saying depends if you like them or not. And uh, yeah, so yeah, the wider the better. Generally speaking, the rule of thumb is two feet per person is comfortable. Now, uh, so no, you can just do the math quickly on that. So for two two feet per person but um also consider that if you want it to be comfortable you know you have you have elbows so you may want to move those elbows um you know so just consider movement but the the minimum standard is two feet per person um to to fit a you know the appropriate island size so you know an eight foot island would be fine but a little wider would probably be a little more comfortable um and so try not to squeeze them into something that's too small. It could, could be um, could be not as comfortable. But, you know, could you get away with it smaller? Maybe, but you're kind of squished in. So love the windows too. Yeah, on this one, uh, beautiful black frame. That's definitely a trend for sure. I think that, that uh, you know, I'm seeing more and more of as well. Oh, I'm asking because when I measure my space, I have at least six feet. So yeah, you're you're better off with with three stools, um, you know. But I mean, uh, yeah, I wouldn't probably put four stools in that space. But if you have four stools, you want to try it and see how it feels. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but for for comfort's sake, you know, it depends on who these you know are these are there are there children going to be sitting there, um, or are there adults that are primarily going to be there? So consider that as well. But generally, uh, yeah, two feet. All right.
Let's go to the next one. Okay, that's cool. All right. So, bam, lots of visual happening with this. Very busy. Um, very busy. Not that I... Well, I do like this. This uh, I do like this a lot, actually. Um, I, 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 You know, it's a lot. It's not for everyone. Um, but it, it's, it's a really beautiful um, space. Here's what I like about it. It might be hard to see in this uh, visual because um, it is very busy. This has what's called an upstand. So, um, which is that higher backsplash with the little ledge. I think that's really cool uh, in the, in a, probably a higher end kitchen in the higher end design. Uh, this is something that would be be featured quite a bit because, you know, obviously it's just quite an extra cost and a uh, very beautiful feature traveling up the back of that range. Um, so, but these aren't things that need to be, you know, excessive. Now those doors are really cool with that mesh um, chicken wire almost. So that <laughs> maybe brings, brings the price down, put that chicken wire in there and you're all good. So beautiful space. They book matched the, uh, the slab there. It looks like in the Island. Um, so, you know, but, but I like how they let it flow on the back. So they didn't make it matchy matchy in the center, um, which is a nice look too, but I just, I like when they do this. So, a lot of features there that are interesting and uh, you'll notice something we talk about uh, before on the channel are the lamps the lamps in the kitchen this is a trend for sure um you know as with the white kitchen this is very 2021 i don't know if lamps are still the vibe right now i don't think they are but um you know Take that into consideration if you're thinking about a lamp. Uh, good pickup here uh, from Helen. What is above the top cabinets? I am not exactly sure. Uh, it looks like some kind of ventilation, uh, which is cool. Is it? I don't know. Um, hard to tell. So, But if it's ventilation, that's interesting. If it's makeup air for the space, for the amount of air that that hood is going to be drawing, uh, that might be an interesting idea. So very cool space, very busy, lots happening, lots of things. But, um, you know, again, really, really interesting to look at. And again, inset doors with the hinges that you can, you know, the barrel hinges, uh, again, which is a, a design feature that's becoming popular again. Uh, inset with barrel barrel hinges. So that means you can see the, the barrel of the hinge. Um, very, very cool. All right. Yeah, so uh Sonormity saying that that could be a thousand CFM range, so it's probably returner. Um, yeah, I would say that's definitely probably a thousand CFM, at least I would think. And so you, you're gonna need some makeup air for that that amount of air um drawn out. You gotta have air coming in. So yeah, HVAC, cold air return. So that's most likely what it is, and I think it's a beautiful way to do it. It's nothing I've never seen that before, so very, very cool. All right, let's go to this one. Very uh, country-ish style. Um, and again, this is something I love about this kitchen is the barrel hinges and the inset doors. Again, that 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 look, I know in the UK and some other European countries, this is something that is very, very trendy. And I think it's only going to carry over to North America eventually more and more. Um, whereas this was popular uh, you know, years and years ago, uh, this this inset style when cabinets were more homemade and we didn't have concealed hinges or European style hinges, I used to call them back in the day. Um, and and so this was a very popular look. So this has that throwback to an older style kitchen, but it is something that is becoming more and more popular. And so if you like that look, uh, this is very doable. A lot of even, um, you know, lower, I don't, I don't want to say lower end cabinets, but just l l cabinets that have, you can buy on a budget, I, I guess is the better way to say it, uh, have options for this. And so, um, you know, that that's that's a, a great, a great feature. And uh, I know more and more companies, uh, cabinet, you know, manufacturers are, are producing these. So if you like that look, it's definitely a look. And, um, something you may, you may want to go for. Now, the other thing I like about this, it looks like they're using marble for a countertop. Um, they've got the rolling pin there. So I know that if you're into, you know, baking, uh, marble is a great surface uh, for rolling dough. And um, just, uh, this is, an, you know, anecdotal. It's it, 
but I've heard I've heard that. Um, I know many people who are you know chefs or what will insert some marble into their kitchen countertop somewhere for that reason. So very very interesting. Not everyone's preferred choice for um, countertop for some obvious reasons that it you know it's it's a little more delicate. But on the higher end scale, you know, marble is becoming, you know, or still is popular. However, you can get that same look, that same color in, in a lot of different uh, material choices, whether it's, you know, uh, a stone of, of another type of, of uh, quartzite or, um, you know, quartz, manufactured quartz or um, even porcelain or dectin, stuff like that. And I like the island uh, overhang with the, the legs more of just a, a sitable place, but also, um, you know, very comfortable uh, to sit at. So that's very cool. And uh, yeah, just, just a nice, nice kitchen, different vibe, not my favorite style of space, but, uh, you know, beautiful in its own right. So a lot, there's a lot you can take away from that. A lot of cool features to look at. You can see the island is, um, you know, has the, the, the Roman, um, valance arch toe kick on the side so that's that's a very cool feature uh as well and there's a great big stump on the countertop by the, <laughs> the coffee over there every kitchen needs a good stump and uh so there you have it maybe that's the next thing trends for 2025 the kitchen stump you heard it here first folks <laughs> Uh, Roman Valance Tokik is a dust collector. Yeah, probably. There's a way to do it, though, that you can easily sweep it out and uh, just get one of those robots <laughs> that, that drag rocks around your hardwood floor. All right, just check out this one. So, like I said, all these kitchens are so different um, in their style, and they all have interesting aspects. And there's a few aspects of this kitchen that I think are very cool particularly the double dishwashers. I know it's hard to tell, but there are two dishwashers in this kitchen. You see them on the right and the left of the sink. Um, they are integrated, of course, with a panel. And uh, hey, that's definitely a thing, two dishwashers. So you're talking budget, you're going to be, you know, you have to buy another dishwasher. Um, okay, looks like there's a great big walk-in pantry. Um, you know, behind that, that, that island, which is interesting, big two door, double fridge, freezer, maybe combo. What I think is interesting about this kitchen and not necessarily, well, it's a kind of a feature that I think is bold is the fact that, um, you know, we talk about the kitchen triangle here and most of you will know my position on it, that it's definitely something that's, uh, a good starting point, but it, it doesn't, Bring you to the finish line necessarily in your layout in your design and so when you are thinking about your space in this particular space that that fridge is you know just on the on the outskirts of the the triangle if you're trying to obey that guideline which i think is great by the way i don't i i, I just think that's a great feature uh and then you have the the double ovens and that looks like a you know microwave or some other type or oh, no that's a coffee maker maybe um that's just completely somewhere else. There's no real landing area by the range, by that, uh, not range, but sorry, by the, the oven, unless, you know, you're right there by the, the um, island, which is cool. So just to me, this is where we think about design and we can think, okay, does it have to obey all the laws? No. Should it? No, no, it shouldn't even, doesn't need to obey all the laws. This has a range top in the island with the great big, you know, ventilation going up through the center. To me, it's like, ah, not my favorite thing at all. But what I do like about it is just the commitment to saying, listen, we're going to design this the way we want. We're going to make it look beautiful, you know, to that style. And, um, you know, obviously that's the point. They're, they obviously don't like country kitchens. Um, or traditional, so they 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 made the style they want. They put it in the features they want, and they they went you know outside the realm of the kitchen triangle. They weren't scared to do that as a de design decision, and I think it you know it's interesting in this space. It, you know, I'm 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 sure there's other seating maybe that we're missing from this photo by that coffee center, uh, which would make that more make it more sense. Um, and then the ovens, the ovens actually threw me for a loop. Why they're so far outside of that? But, you know, to, to me, that would be the thing that, that 
I would actually prefer the fridge to be further outside the triangle uh, than than inside. So anyway, another sink in the in the um, island, and they have some dedicated hot water. Maybe it's sparkling water, maybe it's spring water. So I love that that factor as well. So something for you to think about in your own kitchens is that you can uh, you know add those features. They are expensive, uh, you know, to do, you know, even for a, a really a, a cheaper one, less expensive one, like at Home Depot, you're in $300 range. But uh, for a little extra in the budget, you can easily add something like that, which is nice. And uh, they get the overhang seating. And notice how they have the waterfall on the front of the island. Um, again, these are the design decisions that are, are you know, thought out uh, a little more than just throwing an island with an overhang. You put that on there and it looks really... Um, really really interesting <laughs> so i'm i'm missing some of the chat so raymond saying how is circulation provided for the refrigerator that's a good question i don't know um i don't know how that's provided could be could be something that we're not noticing in the back obviously um so yeah but that's important to, to consider. Very and, and Raymond brings up an, an interesting point here that should be mentioned. When you are designing a kitchen, when you are designing a space for a refrigerator, make sure you follow the manufacturer's guidelines for the amount of ventilation and, and space that that refrigerator needs uh, for that very that very reason. So I love this. This is for the look and not for the cooking. <laughs> that, that should be it. That's that should be a t-shirt's logo. <laughs> Empty KD for the looking, not for the cooking. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh yeah, my camera decided that wasn't funny at all. All right. Yeah, I, I form over function for sure uh, in this one. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Hope you guys are inspired when you're looking at these to just get some ideas. And um, you know, again, don't don't worry about the. Um, the, the apparent high budget of some of these kitchens it's the fact that we can take away some of these things into our own spaces to uh to get ideas and and that's really what i love why i love to, to look at these kitchens like this all right let's look at this one i mean this is obviously why i picked this one because i do get this question quite a bit i've had you know i'm mean, not like it's weekly but i've had the question you know in the past a few times for sure um about hey can i use and i think we may have talked about it on a live stream or have, i've had a question about it even on a live stream can i use um something that is uh, you know an old relic a uh, furniture for an island something that's an antique and i'd say absolutely you can absolutely do that it absolutely provides function um you know it's it's different type of storage it provides a different unique look uh, depending on what your budget is, it could be something that's very budget friendly because it's something that's really DIY friendly and something you can do. It could be a piece of furniture that you love or has sentimental you know, value to you from passed down through your family or something like that. Or you just found a wicked awesome piece at a, at a garage sale or some antique boutique somewhere. So, you know, whatever the case may be, this is really cool. Whether it's originally to look like this or they made it this way, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter, but um, beautiful nonetheless. So, yes, you can absolutely put a piece like that in a kitchen if it makes sense for you, if you like the look of it. You know, if you look at the rest of this kitchen, you know, even for a minute, um, you'll see it's it's very contemporary. It's got inset uh, cabinets. Um, you know, it's got the library poles, too many of them, uh, in my opinion, for, for any kitchen. Uh, if you're going to put library poles, top drawer only. Um, you know, don't, don't, don't overdo it with the library poles and don't put them on doors. That looks a little silly, but again, this, this kitchen has, you know, a very more, um, you know, it doesn't have a rustic feel to it. Oh, generally speaking. So this puts a piece in there. It's a statement piece for sure. The stools kind of match the vibe. And I think that's uh, very interesting. And, uh, the microwave, um, you know, in the base cabinet, gotta love that for sure. I think that's a microwave. It's a, like my microwave, which just, just kicked the bucket. So you'll be happy to hear that, Jackie, that I'm going to have to get an OTR microwave now because my microwave like that stopped working. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. And that's a joke. I would never put an OTR microwave over the range microwave in my kitchen. 
ever for no reason. All right, this kitchen here looked to me like it was built in Minecraft or something that the kids play. But this is an actual space. And, um, and, and you know, this is really outside the realm of any kitchen that I would ever design. And probably most of my viewers, you know, are, are like, what in the world is this? You know, you're talking about 100K. This is way above that budget. You know, this is blowing that out of the water. So this has all the features, you know, that you can imagine. Look at the detail of the ceiling around the window, the, the tiles and the ceiling. I mean, it's just, woo, way out there. But there's some specific things that I think are really cool about that kitchen, about this kitchen that you can take away for yourself. You know, just like a regular kitchen, it's got the pot filler. You know, it's got a massive like 54 inch range that's like purple or burgundy or whatever color that is, which is, you know, outstanding. Um, but what I want you to look at is the door style, not the glossiness, not but that that framed look. So the 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 style and rail of the door and then that center panel of the door, although they're flush, it's a trim detail that I think is is really cool. Seeing more and more of that as well. And um it, you know, I, I think that's a, an interesting style. So where we're used to seeing just, you know, a white or a blue or a green door. Uh, now we have these two-tone door styles, which I think are interesting. Paneled refrigerator, which is great as well. Very high gloss look, of, of course, of this. I love the countertop. But what I really love about this kitchen, which you can't see in this picture, but the next one you will. Look at that floor. I mean, that to me is wowzers it's so beautiful um it looks like it's it hurt your feet to walk on it <laughs> if you look depending on how you look at it it looks like it it's like triangles then it looks like like weird like rectangles it oh man it's just what a beautiful floor so i just thought this is this is so so great um i just loved it and i don't know if you can see this but there's two islands in this kitchen so you have an island in the back and you have an island in the front. So uh, two islands, one for sitting and social, one for prepping and cooking, and there's a sink in it. Um, and, uh, you know, lots of opinions on two islands. We can talk about it in a minute. But, uh, wow, that floor to me is just beyond. Um, looks like there's two dishwashers in this one as well. If you can see the little recess toe kick on one side of the sink and then a recess toe kick on the other. Um so I'm assuming there's two dishwashers. And I mean, in a space like this, why not? Just do it. Um, so very cool. Obviously not everyone's cup of tea, but you know, just wow, you know, so cool to look at. Is it functional? Sure. It's got all the elements of function that you'd want. Um, maybe there's not enough clearance behind those stools, but Actually, there probably is. I think there's enough space between those islands that that's actually not in the way. So very, very cool. And again, yeah, Camille's saying not not my style, but I can appreciate it. And that's the thing. Not A lot of these aren't my style either, uh, obviously, because of... Uh, <laughs> because of... of the, <laughs> because of the, um, the, the, white, the white kitchen comment. <laughs> All right, I get it. Let's move on to the next one. But uh, still, you can appreciate the thought that goes into this. Let's move on to this one. If that last one didn't make you throw up, this one just might. Um, definitely has a vibe. Definitely has that, uh, you know, country-ish vibe to it. There's a particular thing I do like about this kitchen, which I'll show you in a second. You know, it's got the panel refrigerator, got the panel dishwasher. It looks like there's two of them in this one as well. Um, I like that, um, you know, whatever they call that shelf unit thingy i'm sure there's a name for that that i just don't know um where all the plates are stored and uh very art deco i guess maybe is that what it is raymond i'm not really sure what i like about this is this sink this sink i love now not necessarily this color i'm not a fan per se of that color of uh, you know that vein pattern or whatever of stone and it uh, looks like there's a whole other kitchen in the back there. But what I do appreciate about it is that st that style of apron sink with the um, with the front uh, matching. You know, the, the sink is integrated and it's all the same material. That is a beautiful look. Um, I think if you're looking at a farmhouse style sink, that's that's the one to you know spend the money on. Um, I, I think in in more modern design. So more modern and, and going in into the future. I think that's. This will become, you know, if we can get the cost of that down, so the average human 
<laughs> can afford it. I think we're going somewhere, but uh, beautiful. I love it. I love, love, love it. Again, we're seeing that inset design um, for the cabinets, and uh, you know we're seeing we're going to see more and more of that. Now, I don't know what area of the world this comes from. It looks like it's probably in the UK due to the looks like those are light switches on the wall. Um, they don't look North American for sure, but uh, and this has an upstand as well, the backsplash uh, shelf. So very very cool. <laughs> oh, here's a good pick up here uh matthew saying why do people prefer a double hung is it double or is that a single hung window double hung windows when both the top and the bottom can move single hung is when just one moves um not a fan huh of the of the of the, of the you like the, the casement interesting interesting can somebody weigh in on that what's what what do you what are your feels about that I don't really have a problem with the single hung or double hung window, whatever kind of hung window you want to call it. But um, isn't it easier to open? I guess you can wind out. I don't know. Good pickup. Thanks for, for noticing that. Uh, what's happening with the faucets? Uh, what is happening with the faucets? That is just some really retro style, you know, $2,200 faucet. It looks like that top is a spray a nozzle spray that comes off maybe uh, or maybe it's like a hose that goes outside to water the plants not really sure leaning over the sink trying to raise the one makes my back hurt yeah especially if it's sticky it can be an issue i get you on that one for sure and yeah i think it is a uh, a a second kitchen in the back there <laughs> why not why not have two kitchens um all right let's go to this next one hope you're enjoying this uh, you know give a thumbs up if you are if this is uh something that you you like i like doing these type of videos so or we did one last week just like this and uh i got a few comments saying this was really really fun really interesting and, and so i want to do it again so thank you for being along the ride here so far um let's do oh you know what just let me go back for a second uh let me talk about the window for a minute um a lot of times, because I've seen a comment here about cleaning, um, which is interesting. So a lot of times with a, and that's an awesome dog, by the way. It looks like my dog, but she's all white. Um, oftentimes when you're with a double or single hung window, sorry, uh, you can, you they, they'll tilt down towards you. So you can actually clean the outside from the inside. And uh, so that's that's a pretty common feature with, with even regular, you know, windows that you buy at like Home Depot, uh, those double hung windows have a feature where they'll, they'll flip down and clean. So that's actually something that can be easy to do. So, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Awesome. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay. <clears throat> this, this kitchen to me um there's actually nothing i like about this kitchen <laughs> it's like well mark these are all supposed to be kitchens that you like um there's actually nothing that i like about this kitchen other than the fact that they're like let's just throw everything in here and somehow we'll make it work it's like let's just throw it all in and let's just go for it let's not have any coherency to the design let's just bam i mean it looks the, the refrigerator with the glass door uh, you know, that looks like a supermarket refrigerator, you know, I mean, that's a super high end refrigerator. I don't want to see what's my, you, open my fridge. It's a mess. Open your fridge. It's a mess. You can take a picture and prove me wrong, but I guarantee you that 99% of your refrigerators look brutal when you open those doors. That's because they have doors. That's why they have doors. So, so this is an interesting feature. The lights, it looks like there's lights in it. So, wow. I mean, you've got this very high end range. Um, which I can't pronounce the name of. That's absolutely massive. It looks like they've got 13 ovens <laughs> down the wall there. <laughs> you got some old furniture in the back. You got the big island. Then you got this um, old piece of furniture that they've put a sink into it. You can see the pipe running down the center. Just everything going on there. And um, I'm just thinking, and the ceiling detail and the, you know, wow. So would I do this? No, look at the lamp. Look at the, the pot rack hanging. 
there's so much happening it it's it's overwhelming but somehow to me it's like yeah this makes sense um totally works i don't know what else would work in this space after you look at it could you just put a regular kitchen in here maybe not maybe this is you know what, what this needs so i just love looking at these because again it just gives you this idea that hey you know um if you're worried about your design you worry about your layout you're worried about what looks right or what doesn't look right like sometimes that's a really big concern for many people it's uh you know trying to, to mix you know you're you know mix and match metals for for starters and mixing matching colors or two tone this is five six tones this is every kind of metal this is every kind of color this is old this is new this is modern this is ancient it's all jammed into one it's not for everybody it's probably for not very many people but i like i like just the commitment to be like no nah, we're, we're doing what we want in this space so good on you but let's go on to the next one <laughs> and, and a rug to trip on to boot so you got to have a rug to trip on because why not why not break your ankle in that fancy kitchen all right this is um this is an rta company called form so i did an rta video recently where i just go through a few rta companies and i give my you know opinions basically on on, on those brands and someone reached out and said hey form is another RTA company. I'd love to see you talk about that one. So uh, when I seen that this was from Form, I'm going to do another video like that with some other companies that are RTA companies. Um, Form is a, a, you know, kind of maybe on the, on the, this would be more like an Ikea style in terms of, you know, innovation, I guess, and style. But there's a particular feature of this that you might face in your kitchen, which I thought was interesting. And um, I want to wanted to show you. So look right here. Notice how uh, you know the window uh, location, and then the the how the cabinets run to the with the window on the base, and on top they have that bulkhead that stops. And then there's this voided area, and they they just put a panel on the wall and put some shelving there. I think that's a really brilliant idea um, for an RTA company to and nothing against rta companies nothing against rta cabinets but generally speaking and this is very generalized usually rta brands are not like on the leading edge of like innovation or design you know ikea maybe would be probably the exception they're normally a little bit more um you know on that that cutting edge but this to me is just such a great idea and a great use of that space um because you can't carry a wall cabinet over, you can't carry the bulkhead over all the way. So when I seen this, I thought this is really smart. It ties into the kitchen. Um, the open shelves in front of the window don't take away from the the view or the window uh, at all. Um, of course, you have to like open shelves for this, but that's another you know conversation. I think these are located far enough from the range so they don't get too greasy. So you're just getting dust and bugs, not just grease. Um, it's curated, that's fine. But just that idea of, of you getting into that space and using it. So you have difficult spaces in your kitchen. And it, so look, you know, th this can just show you, there's ways that you can come up with solutions for almost anything. And don't be discouraged if you think, well, my kitchen's just, you know, there's nothing I can do with it. I don't know what to do with it. There's always something that can be done. Um, it just takes a few brains looking at it and going through ideas and, and not being afraid to try things that maybe don't even work. But um, this is a, that, that case in point that it makes it very, very interesting um, use of that space. So very, very cool. Uh, soffits above the wall cabinets. I wonder, though, Matthew, if soffits are coming back, you know. You just got rid of get you just get rid of them and here they come back at you. All right beautiful window too so i love that about this kitchen all right let's look at this one um a couple things i love about this space is uh well i love the black cabinets i love the finish on them and i think black is definitely a color you should investigate uh even regardless of the size of your kitchen if you have enough light in there uh it can be really really nice especially paired with you know bright wood um walnut or maple or you know uh, even oak it can look beautiful with oak so um this is definitely something that that you should look at so there's a lot of detail in this kitchen that is beautiful um the cabinets above to the ceiling which are black 
that frame out the cabinets underneath. We looked at something similar to this last week in the live stream, and uh, this gives you another way to do that. I love this look. I love this idea. You could have easily just inset everything to the in the back and carry that same color to the wall. It probably would have looked cool too, but this gives it a particular really modern, almost um, like, I don't want to I mean, like a Japan D kind of look or Scandinavian kind of style uh, in a way. Uh, black really ties that together for sure. Um, yeah, so that that's great. I love the lighting in it as well. And I love the 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 backsplash. It's just beautiful. But anyway, I get okay, so I love that, which we talked about. And I just love this overhang timber uh, butcher block uh, overhang here for the island. Um, now you can see now to me, it looks like. Uh, the island has been like that top where the sink is, is, is quite high. Um, and it looks like it's higher than most islands would be. So that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that because I get the question all the time. Is that, um, is it okay to raise my island? I had this question this week um, through email, I, I think. Is it okay if I raise my island? And the question is, it, it, the answer is yes, it's okay. Because this depends on you and your your use of the space. So if it's functional for you to raise the island, then by all means, I think it's a good idea to raise it. Yeah, if you're if a tall person, if you're taller and um, th that that is more comfortable, then there's no reason why you you couldn't raise it. And so I'm, I'm guessing that's probably maybe the reasoning behind it. Because as a you know, if you're shorter, that's going to be you know elbows up and not that um, not that comfortable to use. Um, but yeah, love the overhang. Really, really, really cool. Uh, what, what did uh, Darlene said? This one makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> this is, I know, Helen, this isn't your, or Darlene, sorry, I know this isn't your vibe uh, for sure. Um, but that's okay. Uh, it's still, uh, still stuff we can take away from it. The stove cope for the wind, but see how hard it is to make the stove and sink line up symmetrically. Yeah, which actually is a great point. Um, and, and I, I've touched on this last week and in other videos, I am not a stickler for the stove and the sink to be lined up uh, symmetrically. I don't think that makes or breaks the sym symmetry of the kitchen. That wall is symmetrical. I don't think this, the sink needs to be. This isn't a true island because it's attached to, it looks like a wall. Um, it's hard to tell exactly how it's attached. So this is more of a peninsula, uh, I believe. However, Sometimes I can create a real bottleneck. So if, if you're thinking about designing a kitchen and you have a sink in an island and a stove right behind you, make sure you have that clearance so that you can comfortably have two people in there if that's the case, if it's a two-person kitchen, which a lot of kitchens are, and that's um, something to be careful of. So that can create a bottleneck in that space. And um, if you don't have expanse amounts of room, which a lot of us don't, you gotta watch for that. So offsetting that can make uh, interacting doors go away with dishwashers and ovens and stuff like that. So um, yeah. But good, good pickup um, on that one for sure. Um, yeah, right. Is the island kind of high? I, I do think it's kind of high for probably most people, but that could be something that was done intentional too. So stools are too tall. Yeah, Mark, I agree. Um, these stools here, the the fabric ones. Um, but again, they're doesn't it doesn't look like my lap would fit like in the vertical space uh, in that particular spot. So, you know, always consider that when you're, when you're looking at, um, uh, overhangs. So not only the depth of the overhang, so your knees can fit, not bang into the back of a panel or into some, you know, bracket or something, but also think of the height and, and, you know, are you gonna be jammed underneath there? And if you're thinking, do I need to have island seating? The answer is no, you absolutely do not need to have island seating for you to have a functional kitchen. I think island seating is overrated. Uh, anyways, and you know, I think more people put it in because they think they're supposed to, because it they're supposed to. But think through it. Maybe there's could be better solution than not having it. Do you actually sit there? Probably not. Maybe you do, but something to think about. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, that you got to get, you got to consider all the options here. You're going to be sawing off the bottom of those stools so you can, you can fit on, underneath it. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. All right. Let's go to the next one. Do we have a next one? Oh yeah. Okay. So this kitchen here, I don't know how many of these I have left actually. Let's see. 
Um, oh, we got one, one or two left, I think. Um, this kitchen here, a lot happening. This has like a, correct me if I'm wrong, is this like a French country vibe? Uh, I don't know. But here's here's my thing. Not, I, you know, this isn't my look. Um, <laughs> but I, I appreciate it for sure. I mean, it's white, it's two-tone. What I think is cool about this, and, and you're going to, you know, get after me for this, is the two islands. Now, why have two islands? Well, that's a great question. However, I think if the space is large enough um, and you can accommodate two islands, one island could be just absolutely massive. Um, you could get away with this. I think in this kind of kitchen, I think something like this works. Now, I'm going to get a lot of pushback. I are, I know just by saying this that this gets out to the wrong people. <laughs> this could be this could be bad for me. However, in saying that, I think in you have to do you. You have to do what's right for your kitchen and what you like and what you love. So regardless of what any designer says, what anybody says, if you think that having two islands in your kitchen is something that you would want to think about and and do, there's no reason. There's no there's, I don't think there's a good enough reason not to if you have the space for it and it, it fits into the flow of your design. In this space, you have the working island and you have this more social island, uh, which I think is fine. There's there's a, a lot of walkway around it. There's a lot of clearance around it. And so for this reason, I like it. Um, this, you'll notice, has the shelving across the windows, which we've seen before, which is a very unique uh, look and something that is definitely you know, getting a little trendy. So. That, that could be cool uh, or not. I don't know. Um, not everyone likes that idea, but it's something that we see. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting things in this kitchen, of course, to look at. You can see the kind of that gold, um, you know, mesh in the back there with that corner door. Uh, and you can kind of see it uh, right over here by my, my picture uh, where I'm at um, on that cabinet. So lots happening in this kitchen. Inset, of course, again, uh, doors, pr probably two dishwashers in this one. But yeah, the two islands, um, you know, go easy in the comments, all right? I don't think it's that that big a deal overall. Now, I know when I talked to to um, to Nick Lewis when, we, when he was on, uh, you know, a, a while ago, we kind of talked about how this wasn't the best idea. He is, He's not a fan of it either. And uh, generally, I'm not for putting two islands in a space that they don't belong in, but in a big enough kitchen where one massive island would just be be too big would make sense. I think it's okay to do this. Yeah, there you go. Tony's saying something about two islands. Uh, two islands absolutely can be compelling if they serve different functions. Yeah, large uh, sink one in under space. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's case specific and it comes down to is it functional or not. So, Winston's like, nope, not for me. Not for me either, to be honest. But uh, I want to make sure that you don't be afraid to do things in your kitchen that, um, you know, other people don't like because it's your space. So if you like it, you have the permission to do it because it's yours. Beautiful tray ceilings and the details. I mean, not a lot. Of, I mean, just money, money coming at you. That painting alone is probably more than my whole kitchen. <laughs> Bam! Double islands. I forgot I had arrows. Wowzers. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Here we go. This I like. This I like a lot. And this is, uh, I wish I had a, uh, you know, picture back from this but uh there's something particular i like about this kitchen maybe you can pick it out before i tell you what it is but there's a few design features i really love and i want to tell you what they are and um we will we will go from there so um let me tell you the things i love about this kitchen because there's a lot of them i love that uh, it looks like quartzite countertop gorgeous um that backsplash is very cool I love the range hood. I was just chatting with someone today about, um, you know, range hoods. Uh, you know, sometimes it's nice just to have something that's uh, paneled or gyp rocked, like in a box. They have something inserted and it has just its, its own feature. So I think that's really beautiful. Um, but what I'm loving about this, and maybe not necessarily this exact specific style of this, but what I really, really love, Jackie said it, is the door style. Now, 
not that I love the specific style, though I'm I'm not against these. I think they look pretty cool, actually. It's I'm looking for the next door. The, I don't think this will be it. I don't think enough people are gonna be like, yes, this is timeless. This is gonna take us, but I'm just looking through, I'm looking for the next door style. So look at that for a minute. Fall in love with that door style for a second as I tell you some other things that I love. Obviously, I love the symmetry. Yes, Helen, I love the symmetry for sure. I'm just that's my brain works that way. I love it. Um, and I love how they did it because they have the two doors that are on the right and left of the range hood open away from your face instead of having you know, a single cabinet with wider doors where they open into your face. So that is a very specific design feature that I really, really appreciate. And if you're designing a kitchen where you can have, and it makes sense to have a single wider door next to your range, I think it's a better use um, than going around a door to get in. I talk about that a lot, but I think that's a great feature to pull, pull out. And uh, I love the two spice racks or some kind of pull out rack on the right and left of the range. I think that's uh, that's very cool too. Um, though some people don't like having their ranges um, or, or spices next to, to heat like that. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not that much in the cooking game that I, that I know that any different, but what do you think of those doors? Yes, Monica, they do look like the bifold closet doors. They do look like that. Right. But that's what I love about this is that it's a different door style. <laughs> and yeah, and they're not for everyone. They're hard to clean. See, hard to clean. Um, but it's the fact that they are. Uh, the fact that they're different. I was I, I I'm a little surprised. I thought you guys would like these doors a little better than you do. You're just you're really not liking these doors. <laughs> but as soon as I seen it, I'm like, yes, this is a very cool door style. Um, I don't know. I just because I think I just want to see not a shaker door. Um, I want to see something else. Some camera again. Um, I want to see something else. My camera disagrees. It doesn't like it, but that doesn't matter. Um, to me, so a lot of features in here. You know. I'm, but I'm liking that door. <laughs> yes, they are different. Well, that's the, that's the thing I'm going for. Oh my gosh! All right. Yes, we're concerned a lot. You like your shaker doors? I get it. It's called. It's all good. <laughs> it's a no for me. Oh, I guess. All right. Well, are they on the bottom cabinets? Um, I don't know. I don't know if they are. I actually don't think they are on the bottom cabinets, though we can only see these doors next to the uh, the range. Um, I have a feeling the bottom are just shaker. So, very cool. <laughs> wow. All right, I don't know. They probably rattle. Okay, the doors suck. All right, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Is it the last one? No. Okay. Here is this better for you? Thin shaker doors. This is probably the door style that's going to carry us through. This is probably the one that's going to be the most modern going forward. So if you look at the um, that grayish green door in the back where the fridge panel is, that is the most modern door style um, that we're seeing recently. Uh, this is very many tones of of color happening, which I think is you know again back to the two tone question: Is it still a thing? hey, you can have way more than two tones in a kitchen and it work. Um, very busy countertop, of course, but big overhang, so that's good. Really big overhang that's raised up. So if you're going to do anything raised, it has to be super, super deep to make it worthwhile doing. So it's comfortable for you not only to sit in, um, to get your thighs underneath there, but also so that you can use the space without stuff dropping off the back. Uh, into the sink. It also serves as a little bit of a splash guard for that sink. So you know, notice how they bring it over into that countertop, which makes a lot of sense. You got the waterfall happening. You get the high end range, but um, you know, check out the the cabinet again. That's uh, above. Uh, so you got the range and the wall cabinets that are that wooden color. Um, different door style. You know, ties into other parts of the kitchen. And then you have the cabinets above that are are, are you know, those are recessed, those are pulled out, then you have the pantry. A lot of dimension happening. So when you're designing a kitchen, um, what used to be the trend is you know, vertical 
dimensions, you know, of, of, of raised cabinets and stuff like that. But I think maybe more modern is just dealing with these these vertical or not vertical, but these, you know, more uh, when you're looking at an elevation front on these these in and out, uh, you know, transitions to, to give the room texture. So I love that about this space. And I just love I love that door style. That, that to me is my favorite door style. OK, not not the other one. Okay, I take it back. I don't even like the other one anymore. I totally love this one. Um, very, very nice. Beautiful color, too, on that that greenish gray. So very, very cool. I think that may, might be the last one. Oh, no, there's a couple, There's one more. Okay, wow. What do you say here, right? So super modern. I mean, you go from this to this, totally different. Um, and what I liked about this kitchen was a few things. You don't see base open shelves very often. So... Okay, there you go. Base open shelves. You don't see any of this very often. And maybe there's a reason. I get it. Maybe it's 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 definitely ultra modern. It's definitely more European style. Uh, I understand that. However, you may be like, uh, is this, oh, is this Japandi? Um, maybe. There's not enough. Well, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Is it Japandi? Someone else know uh, what this is? I don't know if this would be Japandi or not. Japandi has more like mapley tones, uh, generally speaking, uh, with the black. Um, this is more, maybe this is like modern Japandi. I don't know. <laughs> okay, you don't like this one, I get it. I don't like it a whole lot as, uh, either. Um, we got the shin bashing shelves. <laughs> the point is, which I wanted to make, is that, you know, you could have different design elements uh, in your kitchen and they may make sense make sense for your particular space this might not be it but it i think it works here it's definitely something different um you know definitely not for everybody i get it we, we're not we we're not even we don't even like wall open shelves so we're not going to like base open shelves but th these are options that you have that are out there um, i love the green the horizontal grain wood it looks like an oak uh, which is beautiful dark stain which is great you know, this is totally something that was very modern. Not probably most of us wouldn't say we would like this, but you can take away these elements. What I what I really like about this kitchen is the fact that it just has these. Um, it, it just it's it's just different. Okay, it's just different. It's not run of the mill. It's not just your average everyday kitchen. They have some design elements that they thought through. Why are those wall cabinets that height? Why are they like that? Why is why is it all like that? So someone's thinking through this kitchen. To me, this is someone, and whether or not you like it or not, this person has whoever designed this has a real um, artistic view of the space, and that I appreciate. So, and that's not not I don't have that gift. I I have I'm trying to learn how to look at it more artistically and bring in function at the same time because you want to have a space that's functional but also looks beautiful. So. Jackie's asking if it has a ceiling. Well, Jackie, I assume it has a ceiling somewhere, um, but it's probably, you know, this could be a 20-foot high ceiling, so. <laughs> well, what's happening over the range? Uh, that's a range hood. So that's something that you see in European countries more than we do here in North America. Um, that is a, a range hood. Um, nice wide open floor space. Yeah, a lot of good open, open uh, floor space. It seems functional. <laughs> a wide variety and that's the cool thing there's no one size fits all there's no one style fits fits every space and you take any space any wall you know measurements and you can put in a lot of different design styles uh according to what you like so that's the, the great thing about kitchen design is that there's no um you know one size fits all for sure <laughs> do rich people make coffee uh they don't need to but they should have a coffee maker. I think that just only makes sense. So, <laughs> this one probably, oh, yeah. Do you think the cabinets are laminate? Uh, they could be. They might be a thermal foil, polyester wrap, something like that. Like the drawers, but where's the dishwasher? There could. There might not be a dishwasher, or there could be a drawer dishwasher that's paneled. It's hard to know. This is a very high-end space, so it could be that. I I imagine that there's maybe a paneled dishwasher, or maybe there's a butler's pantry somewhere. I'm not sure. 
Now, I think that's the last one. No, of course not. We have this one. <laughs> I'm going to leave you with this one. This is the final one of the night, I promise. Um, <laughs> oh, I just thought I'd throw this one in for fun. I know I've looked at the Anatovich kitchens before in a video, and um, these are guys are from Italy or Spain, I believe. And um, luxury, 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 luxury kitchens. Uh, what's not the like? This is a million dollar plus kitchen, and um, so there you go. If this is your, uh, if this is your cup of tea, then invite me over for a Tesla and um, whatever else you want to give me, or Lamborghini. Uh, anyway, you can enjoy that that picture for a second as you look at it there, and just pick out all the the amazing details. You know, obviously this is a lot on your on your face <laughs> it's just a lot on your face a lot on the eyeballs um and you know who who, who wants this there is a clientele for this uh, out there in the world um very high-end um you know clientele who who own oil oil fields probably or who own i don't know steel mills or something um I'm guessing, you know, they'd have to have a lot of money. And so there's a, there's a clientele for this. It's got literally candle stands on the island. So forget lamps. We're going back to candles. Um, so there you go. <laughs> I thought I thought you guys would like this one for sure. So that's uh, that. those are the kitchens we were looking at. I just want to check through um, and look at some of the, um, <laughs> the Liberace kitchen. Yes, what a big old grand piano in there you're all set <laughs> my face oh i love your comments crazy drug lords oh my goodness maybe who knows all right very very cool so lots of beautiful kitchens tonight on this or if you're watching this replay if you're watching at this point in time thanks so much for being here along for the ride and i hope you liked some of those kitchens hope you maybe hope you did like some of those kitchens the point is not to like all of them obviously because you can't possibly you know you don't, you don't have every style that you love. There's particular things that you like and there's particular things that you don't. And that's totally obvious and fine. Um, but it is a good idea to look at some of these things to bring in elements of design, especially if you're a designer, especially if you're in that field, I know, if, or if you're like myself, um, or you're thinking about doing a kitchen renovation, you're just looking for things to do in your kitchen that you wouldn't maybe necessarily see from, you know, maybe your designer isn't showing you, or maybe, you know, you're, you're kind of stuck in, in what you, you know. And so expanding, you know, your creative mind is a good idea and sees, you can see what's out there. Um, loving it. Love you guys. So appreciate you being on here and yeah, please hit the like button. I'm begging you <laughs> for sure. Um, give it a thumbs a thumbs up all day so next week we'll be back of course uh thanks nick um oh sorry what was this got to, got to figure out what to do with the kitchen ceiling that goes from eight to 14 oh interesting yeah well there's there's lots of options out there <laughs> thanks kira appreciate it um love it yes he hit it Woohoo! All right. It's scaring me. <laughs> yeah, when you have some of those design challenges, it can be it can be challenging. Um, that's why it's great to uh Camille, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you being on the live. Um hope you can join again and hopefully that everyone who's on can join us again in the future. If you have uh comments or questions, uh that you know, definitely put them in the comment section below if you're watching this in a replay. Um, but yeah, back to that ceiling height issue. You know, you have a lot of um you know those challenges it, it this is where having you know someone to look at that kitchen with you you work with a designer you, you, you just brainstorm ideas you know and, and get people to think about ideas about that space because you know oftentimes you you just might not see it but someone else can have an idea that just might might click and uh, you got to design some of those things see some of those things to see what doesn't work what might work and come up with some really interesting ideas so there's there's solutions for everything. I'm convinced of that. Uh, it's just a matter of finding them. And that's, you know, where you have, you know, channels like myself to help with that. Kitchen Cider helps with that. He's great, great content. He's back producing videos. I'm going to have him back on soon, hopefully, on a live stream. 
and uh, just go to your local design stores and your local shops that have designers. There's so many talented designers out there. You just don't know what's brewing in that brain of theirs that they can bring out in your space. So go for that. And of course, I have a design service that you can check out on www.mtkd.ca if you want to do that as well. All right. Listen, um, I'm going to take off. I appreciate y'all, and uh, we'll see you uh, next Wednesday for another great time in Kitchenland. God bless you. Take care.